An explosive situation has arisen at the Redondo, a secluded resort where the rich and famous go to be beautified and indulged in total privacy. Someone there has been planting bombs, and although so far they've done relatively little harm and the manager of the resort has fooled people into thinking they're just construction accidents, I've been charged with finding out what's really going on. When she heard where I was going, my good friend George Fane insisted I bring along her latest invention, a handheld bomb sniffing device. It's never been tested in the field, but it's designed to detect components commonly used in detonators, and she's almost positive it will work. I'm not crazy about the almost part, but it's got to be better than nothing, right? And as my other good friend Bess Marvin was quick to point out, the thing practically fits in my purse. So now that I'm pretty much prepared for anything, looks like I'm off to the Redondo. Welcome to the Redondo. You must be Nancy Drew. I'm Cassidy Jones. Mr. Blesky is waiting for you in there. You can go right in. On second thought, why don't you help me get organized around here? It'll help you get the hang of things. I can do that, sure. in that harmonica. I wonder what it is. I wonder who this Hippocrates person is. That should do it. Cassidy, do you know who Hippocrates' bell is? Ah, he would be the original owner of this place. Of course, back then, the Redondo wasn't a spa, it was a private mansion. I hear he was a bit eccentric. I see. Well, I finished that list you had for me. Great job. Our boss awaits through that door. No, forget it. Look, Princess Mia, those are our rates. If you think they're too high, then frankly, maybe you'd be happier slipping into a nice hot mud bath somewhere else. Hello? Thanks for wasting my time, tightwad. Nancy Drew, good. You know why you're here, right? 
Of course, you want me to... Of course, you want me to investigate the bombings. Shh! Do not use that word. You're here to investigate the construction accidents. Our guests hear construction, they shrug it off. They hear that other word, they get upset. These people are millionaires who come here to get pampered, not upset. The good news is, with that hair of yours, those clothes, that makeup, you'll fit right in. You really think so? Yeah. Everybody's gonna assume you're the new gopher. You know, go for this, go for that. The new general assistant. Oh. No, that's good. That way no one will suspect you're really a detective who's an expert at defusing bombs. Uh, I'm not sure who told you that, but... Of course, that also means you can't go around bothering people. And if somebody asks you to do something, you're gonna have to do it. No questions asked. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Blesky, but I'm afraid I've got some towels that need folding. Oh, great. Another one. Well, you got here just in time. Would you like me to... Would you like me to help fold towels? Folding towels is a code. It means someone's found a note saying where a... bomb's been hidden and turned it into reception. Shoot. Look, I've got to take this call. Go on back out there. Cassidy will explain everything and get you started. Go on. Go. Nick Blesky. See, each bomb has been preceded by a note. The very first note said that it contained the location of the bomb that was about to go off. Unfortunately, the rest of that note, and each of the other notes that followed, was in some kind of totally indecipherable code. However, I'm sure you, detective that you are, will be able to decipher it, determine where the bomb is, and defuse it before it goes off with no problem. Well, I can sure try, but... Fortunately, the bombs aren't lethal. Truly annoying, yes, but truly dangerous, no. Apparently, our mad bomber just wants to torment us. Here's a map so you can find your way around the spa. And here's the note. Decipher it, and you'll be on your way.
vines. Wonder what that means. Maybe I should look at the resort map. Yes, that must be the room where the next bomb is planted. I hear someone. Who's there? Mr. Mingles, is that you? Speak. Uh, no, I'm Nancy, the new... I'm the new general assistant, and you are... Call me Mrs. Montague. Now, quickly, scratch the left side of my nose before I go absolutely insane. Hurry. Ah, wonderful. Now get me a cup of lime sherbet, two scoops with a sprinkling of citron zest and one cinnamon stick, and a spoon, of course. Silver, not plastic. And don't plan on going anywhere for a while. As you can see... You're going to be the one operating the spoon. Actually, I kind of need to do something else right now. Do something else? Really? Like what? Get fired like the last alleged assistant Blesky sicked on me? Keep this up and that can easily be arranged. Lime sherbet, did you say? On second thought, forget the sherbet. I'm chilled enough as it is. The hot water for this bath doesn't seem to be working. Find out why and fix it before my gloriously flawless skin becomes a hideous landscape of goosebumps. This bath has become unacceptably tepid. You simply must turn up the heat. Ah, the mud is warm again. Much better. Before I got in the tub, I noticed that a plant over there was dying. Please do something about it. The poor thing's struggle to live is draining the energy from this room in a most unpleasant way. This watering can is empty. Revived the plant. I can tell. I can feel the energy returning to the room already. Please, check the latest Tinseltown Tatler and give me the gist of Lydia Lynn's column. That woman is so deliciously catty. Lydia's column suggests that Jasmine Ivy came to the Redondo for a little plastic surgery. I suspected as much myself. Not that there's anything wrong with a judicious touch-up now and then. Brew me a cup of my special anti-aging tea and brew it correctly, or you'll soon find yourself filing for unemployment. Aha! Tea-making instructions. Done with the tea? Very good. Okay, she's asleep. Time to look for that bomb.
emergency override panel. This looks promising. We're out of commission. It looks like some green goo is dripping out of that diffuse bomb. I guess that explains the sticky situation the Mad Bomber's note referred to. Mr. Mingles, are you there? Mr. Mingles, I insist you drop whatever it is you're doing and answer me. Speak. Um, there's nobody here but me, Mrs. Montague. Well, then, don't just stand there. Find Mr. Mingles. Look in the salon. He's hopelessly attracted to the smell of hair. He likes the smell of hair? Just make sure he doesn't have any in his mouth before you grab him or he might swallow it. Uh, is Mr. Mingles by any chance... Is Mr. Mingles a dog? Of course he's a dog, you ninny! An award-winning, impossibly adorable Pomeranian. Now find him! Go! On to my next location. <laughs> 